Hello. My name is Dave Goldberg. I'm a faculty member at the University of Illinois, and I'm also co-director of the Illinois Foundry for Innovation and Engineering Education. Today, I'd like to talk to you ab about some of the good writing and thinking that has gone on for the transformation of engineering education and ask the question why it is that we aren't changing more rapidly um, to achieve the engineer of the future. In particular, we'll talk a little bit about um, how engineers are category creators, the problem of change from an institutional perspective, how we can go about promoting respectful change, and then talk about iFoundry, a framework for uh, organizational um, promotion of principled change. Much of the writing that's taken place over the last few years in the Engineer 2020, the Deuterstadt Report, and elsewhere has talked about the need to create engineers attuned to a global economy. In particular, the pace of change is such that we need engineers that are category creators, not mere category enhancers. This requires that we figure out a way to educate engineers that are um, more creative from day to day. Uh, Dan Pink, in his influential book, A Whole New Mind, talks about a, a certain skill set that's required for pervasive creativity and even suggests that um, in the future, uh, professionals might uh, take a, a degree like engineering and pair it with a master's of fine arts as opposed to a master's of, of um, um, business administration. So this is an intriguing vision, but we have trouble changing even when there are good reasons to change and we have the will to change. We find that change is slow in coming if it comes at all. And the problem is really what we might call an academic NIMBY problem or not in my backyard problem. Uh, faculty members in a curriculum committee um, may feel very positive towards change until those changes touch them personally. In other words, change is fine, but don't change my course. And so then the dynamic of log rolling takes over and individuals interested in not having their courses changed or their interests modified um, band together and opposed even fairly minor changes that at the beginning everyone agreed upon. So to try to overcome this dynamic, we need to think in new ways and modify our organizations so that we can achieve change in a principled manner. The question is really whether or not we can promote respectful change. That is, we need to have a locus for change where change is part of the regular mission, yet we need to respect academic governance and the prerogatives of faculty in, in ways that um, uh, will ultimately hold sway and, and vet curriculum changes in a, in a principled way. Well, there are really three elements of, of, uh, of a solution to this problem. The first is to suggest a pilot unit. The pilot unit creates a separate place where change can take place. The second element is to suggest fa federalist governance where individuals from the departments involved in change come together uh, and, and help make decisions, individual changes as to which changes might be um, acceptable to an individual department or unit. And then the final element is that the ultimate decision stays home. That is that the academic unit is ultimately responsible for making changes permanent. In, in this way, the Illinois Foundry um, for Innovation and Engineering Education was just established along these principles to, uh, to, vet, to test and vet um, innovations along the lines of uh, the category uh, creator model. There are six elements to iFoundry. The first is to create a collaborative interdepartmental unit. Um, iFoundry was established originally as a grassroots effort among five departments at the University of Illinois, and now um, that initial grassroots effort is, is being tried on a larger scale. Another principle is that um, volunteers come to iFoundry who are enthusiastic about change. Um, both faculty and students come together to uh, 
to, to, tr to try uh, modifications to the curriculum, to coursework, and to content, uh, and to pedagogy that will assist um, uh, the needed transformation. Existing authority is used in the dean's office to allow modifications to individual students' uh, curricula to permit change to take place and be tested without making permanent changes in the curricula. But at the end of the day, those, the, the changes that are proposed for permanent, um, uh, as permanent curriculum changes go back to the departments for a vote. In all of this, at a university like the University of Illinois, we're very concerned that whatever we do scales to a large setting, uh, a large public uh, state institution with 53, 5,400 undergraduate students. And um, this is an important thing and a, and a difficult challenge um, um, for any large um, school. In addition, another principle of iFoundry is to do this out in the open and also to band together with other like-minded uh, colleges and universities to try to get um, uh, best practices from, a, from around the country and around the world working, uh, working in, in many different places at once. So as we move from the Cold War engineer to the category creating en engineer, we have to be mindful of the institutional effects that thwart change. The Illinois Foundry for Innovation in Engineering Education was created to overcome the, that institutional resistance. And as we move forward in 2008, we'll, we'll be piloting many new programs and, and uh, uh, content changes and curriculum changes under the rubric of iFoundry. Um, as we do this, it will be important to consider the nature of engineering and the nature of engineering education in principled ways so that as we, as we go forward, uh, the curriculum changes we make are, are useful um, in practice and in the academy. And for more information about this, you can go to the website at the bottom of this uh, uh, PowerPoint slide, and you can also look at other videos on, on the website to discuss other elements of the iFoundry solution.